Brooke Shabbat Yom, brothers and sisters, Hebrews in Jamaica, the Caribbeans, the West, to the four corners of the earth, scattered greetings. This Shabbat lesson, we're going to tackle it, uh, Benjamin and the Associated People, part two, right? Right, brothers and sisters, Benjamin and the Associated People, part two, right? Note, it is recommended to read the House of Yehuda before reading this article, right? This is from the Black Simba. Benjamin was the twelfth son of Jacob, the tribe of Benjamin, was taken into the Americas as slaves along with the tribes of Yehuda and Levi of the House of Yehuda. These Benjamites, Chromanantines or Maroons, right? So, brothers and sisters, mean of Chromanante, right? Chromananti, Chromanantins, Chromananti, or Chromananti with a K, derived from the name of the Ghanaian slave fort, right? Slave fort, Chromananti with a K, in the Ghanaian town of Chromanansi, right? With a K, Chromanansi. Central Ghana is an English language term for enslaved people from the Akan ethnic group, right? Another Hebraic group, Yuhadim, right? Benjamin, taken from the Gold Coast region in modern day Ghana, brothers and sisters, right? So you have a mean of Chromanantins, 19 and also maroon could, you know, also describe the color too, darkish reddish, maroon. You see, you describe the color of the people also. This claim slave black people, right? So called, right? Okay, so now you have a meaning of that, brother and sister. Let's continue, right? These Benyamites, right? Chromanantines or Maroons, as they were known, were ferocious fighters and fled slavery by fighting the Spaniards and hid in the mountainous region of the land of the island of Jamaica, Jamaica, and other nearby islands, Barbados, Trinidad. Many of these Maroons were taken from the Ashanti region of West Africa, former Gold Coast region located in the modern day Ghana. The Ashanti as well as many other tribal West African nations, Gribo in Liberia, Yoruba and Igbo and Nigeria of Nigeria, Akan of Ghana, still hold to many ancient Hebrew customs. The name Ashanti has Hebrew origin, the T at the end meaning race of people and Ashan meaning smoke. Joseph, Joseph Williams noted and documented the comparison and similarities between the Ashanti and the Hebrew custom, right? Right, take a look at the screen brothers and sisters. On page 66 of Joseph Williams book, right, is on the screen, the abstract on the screen. Thus far, however, we have shown certain cultural elements common to the Ashanti and the Asian Hebrews such as the ob cult religious dances use of amien vow value patriarchal system parallel symbolism of authority in stool and chair idogami cross cousin marriages familiar familiar names exogamy simplicity of marriage writ and the part wine plays in the ceremony on cleanliness after childbirth, purification ceremony, menstrual seclusion, and ceremonial ablutions, besides the Ashanti loan words of apparent Hebrew origin. Josephus Joseph J. Williams, Hebrewism of West Africa, 1930. You should get that book, brothers and sisters. Very interesting book to get. Right? Take a look at the screen. Here's a. Uh, Ashanti King, right, ruler of the Ashanti from 1931 to 1970. Paramfa the second, or Primfa the second, brothers, is a Primfa the second. Here's another abstract from the same book, Hebrewism of West Africa, from by Joseph J. Williams. 
it reads as follows on page 22. In the first place, many Hebrewism were discovered in the Ashanti tribal custom. Then several Ashanti words were found to have a striking resemblance to those of equivalent Hebrew meaning. Finally, the supreme being of the Ashanti gave a strong indication of being the Yahweh or Yahuwah of the Old Testament brothers and sisters, right? This image right here is the Ashanti king and his attendants, right? Let's take another uh, page out of the Hebrewism of West Africa, 1930s on your screen. So we're going to look at page 70, right? For they ascribe to Elohim the attributes of omnipresence, omniscience, and invisibility, besides which they believe that he governed all things by providence, by reason Elohim is invisible. They say it would be absurd to make any corporeal representation of him, wherefore they have such multitude of images of their idol gods, which they take to be subordinate deities to the supreme Elohim. Again, Joseph J. Williams, Hebrew Museum of West Africa, 1930. 1930, you should get that book, brothers and sisters. Very, very, very interesting, interesting book, right? Although Benjamin was the smallest tribe of Israel, they were possibly the fiercest. Mordecai and Esther both were Benjamites and were used by Elohim to deliver the Hebrews, used or you had deans while in captivity in Babylon, according to ancient Jewish texts. Esther, this is where the origin of Purim comes from. They were badly outnumbered, but held their ground and stood against the rest of Israel in a civil war, slaughtering 40,000. 40,000. 40,000 Israelites before Elohim allowed them to be defeated the third day. You can read that in Judges 20, brothers and sisters. Right. It should be noted that at the end of this war, the Israelites had burned down the Benjamin city, which is how the Benjamites recognized they had been defeated. This may be where the name Ashanti originates, considering it means the people of the smoke city. In Jamaica, the enslaved Maroons fought fiercely just as their ancient ancestors did in Israel. Firmly believing in liberty or death, some Spaniards even called them the Cimarrones, which means wild or untamed. There were 16 uh, slave revolts between the 1655 and 1813. By the 1820s, plantations were losing some 2,500 Maroons per day. As they continued to fight off the oppressors and run away into the mountains, the shoulders of the Mosai. Huh? In 1831, the largest slave uprising was initiated in northern Jamaica with 20,000 Maroons attacking Tonja Plantation and take, taking over large pockets of land. This rebellion lasted only 10 days, but it took British troops all of January of 1832 to gain back control, which eventually they did. Plantation owners were terrified of more uprising after this, and Parliament was soon in talks of ways to end slavery. You see, brothers and sisters. Right? Rasta Rastafari. Or of the Rastas or Rastafari are often associated with the Ethiopian flag embolism with the conquering line of Yehuda. This is why Benjamin was associated with the wolf, an animal known for its boldness and fierceness in battle, which they show throughout history. The Apostle Paulus, or Paul, who wrote a large portion of the New Testament, also confesses to be of the tribe of Benjamin. You could read in Romans 11, Romans 11. Paul then saw the apostles sent to preach to the Gentiles was relentless in arresting the early Hebrews. Believers before Elohim rebuked him, and after Paul came to accept Yahusha, he continued in his boldness, being relentless in his love for others. This is what he learned from studying Yahusha's teaching, eventually becoming the strongest contributor, contributing author to the canonized New Testament doctrine. Moshe wrote about the tribe of Benjamin, saying, 
which is on the screen brothers and sisters right right it's on the screen right we're going to give him deuteronomy 33 colon 12 and now benjamin he said the beloved of yahuwah shall dwell in safety by him and yahuwah shall cover him all the day long and he shall dwell between his shoulders the mountains i was said earlier right the shoulders right brothers and sisters Right, here's an image of the national hero of Nani of Jamaica, Queen Nani. Right, fought to free 800 enslaved Hebrews. She came, she became a well respected spiritual leader of the Jamaican Maroons in the 18th century. Again, this image you see on the screen is Queen Nani of the Maroons. She freed 800 enslaved Hebrews. She came. She became a well-respected spiritual leader of Jamaica Maroons in the 18th century. Often the Maroons would flee from the plantation owners and into the Blue Mountains or the cockpit country since it was very difficult for the British to hunt them down in that region. There they formed independent com communities from their oppressors. The mountainous region of Jamaica became their refuge. This could be the safety of the Benjamins that Moshe prophesied about them about with them hiding in the shoulders of Elohim. The Maroons were expert at navigating this terrain over the British and also used an abeng, a car horn, a bugle, or a shofar, right? The signal alarm and other communication to each other over long distances, just as their ancient ancestors did also. Hmm? Hmm, brothers and sisters? Okay, brothers and sisters, let's go to Hosea 5, colon 8 is on the screen. Hosea 5, colon 8. Blow the ram's horn in Gibar, the trumpet in Ramah, cry aloud at Beth Haven, look behind you, O Benjamin. Hmm? Hmm, brothers and sisters, so the scattered Hebrews, house of Yehuda, that's a good article, and uh, you should go reach, reach, reach out and research. Right, brothers and sisters? Okay, brothers and sisters, the tribe of Benjamin in the Bible. Bereshit 35 colon 18, right? Bereshit 35 colon 18. Okay, brothers and sisters, it's on your screen. Bereshit 35 18. And it came to pass as her soul was in the parting, for she died that she called his name Benoni, but his father called him Benjamin. Right, Bereshit 49, calling one, and, ya and Yaakov called unto his son and said, Gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. The last days occur from the days of the Mashiach till today. The tribe of Benjamin, was, tribe of Benjamin along with Yehuda and Levi were sold into captivity by the Africans and Arabs to the white man. The white men then transported with transported them in chains on slave ships to Jamaica, various West Indies islands to serve hard bondage as slaves, right? During so we had the Maroons, the word maroon in Latin meaning wolf primarily throughout the West Indies, which were runaway slaves that fled to the mountains and swamps of the island. The white men could not subdue these men because they knew the land very well and could survive on their own living off the land. The Maroons firmly believe in liberty or death. In other words, if they could not be free, they would rather be dead. Right, Bereshi 49, 27, Benjamin shall raven as a wolf. In the morning he shall devour the prey, and at night he shall divide the spoil. Benjamin shall raven as a wolf, the word to raven, in this sense, or sense, yes, means speak boldly, harshly. The tribe of Benjamin raven as a wolf through their music by speaking the truth that they are his rights. And Elohim will judge Babylon, America, and the white race for the injustice they have done. The children of Israel, slavery, raping, our women dividing the families. For example, in Jamaica and the other Caribbean islands, the white man buys up the best parts of the land and have the people work the land for almost nothing. Slave labor, the child of Benjamin Raven about their suffering and oppression by singing about it in their music sounds contrary to what was forced upon them by the white men through his religions that the Mashiach and the Israelites are white and etc. 
certain artists speak through their music of America being Babylon, Psalms 137 proves America is Babylon and how it's going to fall, Revelation 18, 19 to 21, that the Mashiach, Solomon, etc. are black according to the Bible, and also sing about themselves being Israelites, for example, Luciano, the white man's kingdom is falling, Dennis Brown, the black revolution, Peter Tosh, oppressor, man, where are you going to run to, down oppressor man, where are you going to run to? Burning Spirit, do you remember the days of slavery? Junior Reed, Yahweh is my shepherd. Anthony B. Firepan Room. Also, the white man cannot run away from the judgment day and by the rivers of Babylon by various artists. Most regular artists get the inspiration from the Bible, from books like Psalms and Revelation. When the scripture says as a wolf, meaning the same way a wolf howls at its prey before attacking it, is the same way the child Benjamin are howling at the white race through their music. Barashi 14 and 27 continues in the morning he shall devour the prey and and the morning represents the tribe of Benjamin being raised up in rulership in the kingdom of heaven. Isaiah 9 calling to the people that walked in darkness, slavery, not knowing your nationality, etc. have seen a great light. Mashiach is the light and wisdom. John 8 colon 12, the kingdom of heaven, they that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, America upon them had the light shine. So whither we are scattered, we are in the land of darkness, because that's not our ethnic land, you see. For a long time the nation of Israel has been in darkness, captivity. We were brought here as slaves, our women and children were raped and our families destroyed. We were burned and lynched and had no knowledge of who we were according to the scriptures. He shall devour the prey, meaning in the kingdom of heaven, the tribe of Benjamin alongside his brethren are going to destroy and enslave the white men and all nations. Read Psalms 149, calling 6 to 9 and Obadiah 1, calling 15 to 19. They're going to end up being our servants. You see, brother, that they're going to serve us. You see, those who led into captivity, they themselves will be captive. That's what the scripture said. And that's going to be fulfilled. You see, verse 27 continues, And at night he shall div uh, divide the spoil. You see, brothers and sisters, the night represents the end of the white man's rulership. So verse 27, we're still in better shit, right? Genesis, right? It continues, and at night he shall divide the spoil. The night represents the end of the white man's rulership. And the second coming of the Mashiach agrees of Phaniah 1, 14 to 15. It will be the white man's night captivity and our day rulership over the nations. He shall divide the spoil. This means after the white men's and the nations has been enslaved, Benjamin and the other tribes will divide the riches and wealth of the nations. Read Jeremiah 30, calling 16. That is true reparation right there. Not crying to the, the, the government, the white government of, of the world for reparation. They're not going to give it to you. They don't want to see you rise. They want to keep us observant, so they're not going to give it to you. Only most they can give us reparation. Right? Only most I alone can give us reparation, brothers and sisters. Because he is the one that sent us into captivity because of our foreparent disobedience and our continued disobedience till this very hour. Deuteronomy 33, colon 12. And of Benjamin, he said, The beloved of Yahuwah shall dwell in safety by him. And Yahuwah shall cover him all the day long, and he shall dwell between his shoulders. Again, the mountains, shoulders, right? Shall dwell in safety by him. This is talking about, shall dwell in safety by him. This is talking about the Most High protecting Benjamin from his enemies, and that the white men during slavery did not kill them off. In the end, the tribe of Benjamin shall devour the prey, which is the white men and the other nations for enslaving them. Right, Deuteronomy 30, colon 12 continues. And Yahuwah shall cover him all the day long, meaning the Mosai was going to bless Benjamin with good weather and land. Verse 12 continues. And he shall dwell between his shoulders. He shall dwell between his shoulders, meaning between the heavens and the waters, good climate and good land to plant 
and grow crops. The following are facts proving that the West Indies are from the child Benjamin. The following are facts discovered by a so-called Jew Rabbi Matthew after in-depth study and research found in a book titled From Babylon to Timbuk 2 by Rudolf R. Windsor on page 133. Before Dr. Goodby published his book The Lost Tribes and Myth Rabbi Matthew organized a Hebrew congregation in 1918 and proclaimed that the black people of the United States and the West Indies are the original black Hebrews. The following is found in a book titled Nature Knows No Color Land. That's a very good book. I touched on that book uh, uh, in my videos, uh, Jews, Hebrews of Jamaica. Go back and, uh, you know what I mean, watch our video. You know the music. The music uh, I tend to be a little bit loud, but you still go understand and read and, and 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 see where the video is coming from. You see, brothers and sisters, the following is found in a book that Nature Knows No Color Line by J. A. Rogers on page one twenty three and one thirty. Many of the Jews who were banished from Portugal by John II settled in West Indies. John Bigelow, who visited Jamaica in 1850, saw the descendants of the Jews and said they were Negroid, black. Hmm? Over the, let me go over this information again with your answers. The following is found in a book titled the Nature Knows No Color Line. You should get that book by J.A. Rogers on page 123 and 130 is on the screen, right? Many of the Jews, or Yuhadim, many of Yuhadim who were banished from Portugal by John II settled in West Indies. John Bigelow, who visited Jamaica in 1850, saw the descendants of these Yuhadims and said they were Negroid, black. Hmm? Or bibliography, you could read out New Webster Dictionary and Theosia, page 83, right? History of Slavery by Susan Everett. Nature Knows No Color Line by J.A. Rogers. We just read an episode from that. From Babylon to Timbuktu by Rudolf R. Winsler, right? Before the Mayflower by Leroni Bennett Jr. Why, brothers, so these are bibliography. You can uh, go and research for yourself, search out, and get some knowledge. Let me go over the list again for you. The New Webster Dictionary by Thesaurus, page 83. History of Slavery by Susan Everett. Nature Knows No Color Line by J.A. Rogers. From Babylon to Timbuktu by Rudolf R. Windsor. Before the Mayflower by Leroni Bennett Jr. Right, brothers and sisters. So search all these information, these bibliography. Read them and send them for yourself and you'll see the truth. It's undeniable, brothers and sisters right it's undeniable proof that so-called jamaicans and some here in america are benjamin so we, we benjamin and and judah is intertwined and levi also we got levi in jamaica so i go back on my video you know levi in jamaica you see brothers and sisters the tribe of levi in jamaica you see this article brothers and sisters is from the washington post Right, because I mentioned uh, the involvement of, you know, our African brother, brothers and sisters, you know, even though we are the same uh, skin, but we're not the same skin, king folk, right? So, I mentioned that earlier in, in, the, in, the, in the lesson, so we're going to go in a little bit deeper into the involvement. Right, this from the Washington Post, right? In Uida, right? In Uida, Benin, a man walks past a statue of Francisco Felix de Zusa, a major slave merchant who worked in the 18th and 19th centuries, right? In what is now Benin and is considered the father of the city, the statue is covered with lights, Jane Han for the Washington Post. Uida, Benin, less than a mile from what was once West Africa. So, Huida is another word for Judah. Right? So, Huida or Judah, Benin, less than a mile from what was once West Africa's biggest slave port. Departure point for more than a million people in chain stands 
as such of Francisco Felix de Zusa, a man regarded as the father of the city. There is a museum devoted to his family and a plaza in his name. Every few decades, his descendants proudly bestowed his name Chaka on a de Zusa who is appointed the clan's new patriarch. But there is one part of the Zusa's legacy that is seldom addressed. After arriving here in the late 1700s from Brazil, then a Portuguese colony, he became one of the biggest slave merchants in the history of the transatlantic slave trade. In Benin, where the government plans to build two museums devoted to the slave trade in collaboration with Smithsonian institutions, slavery is an embattled subject it is raised in political debates downplayed by the descendants of slaves, traders, and deplored by the descendants of slaves. At a time when Americans are again debating, again debating how slavery and the Civil War are memorialized, Benin and other West African nations are struggling to resolve their own legacies or complicity in the trade. African nations were struggling in resolved their own legacy of complicity in the trade. African nations are struggling to resolve their own legacy of complicity in the trade. Benin's conflict over slavery is particularly intense, right? Incredible quest to find the African slave ship that sank in the Atlantic. For over 200 years, powerful kings in what is now the country of Benin captured and sold slaves to Portugal, French and Britain. Merchants, the slaves were usually men, women, and children from rival tribes, right? Like during the war, they would capture their, their, their rival and, and sell them to slavery, right? So the slaves were usually men, women, and children from rival tribes gagged and jammed into boats bound for Brazil, Haiti, and United States. The trade largely stopped by the end of the 19th century, but Benin never fully confronted what had happened. The kingdoms that captured and sold slaves still exist today as tribal networks, and so do the groups that were traded. Right, so do the groups that were raided. The descendants of slaves merchants like the De Sousa family remains among the nation's most influential people with a large degree of control over how Benin's history is portrayed. Right, brothers and sisters, if you take a look at the screen, you will see uh uh, uh, a picture of the door of no return in Huida, Judah, Oida, Judah, which marks the site where slaves were shipped to the Americas. Jane Han for the Washington Post. Right? And it's another image right here, brothers. It's a close up of the slaves on the door of no return. Right? Again, by Jane Han for the Washington Post. The building, the new museum, the country will have to decide how it will tell the story of its role in slave trade. It is finally ready, for example, to paint De Sousa as a slave merchant that he was. The tensions are still there, said Anna Lucia Argo, or Aragu, a professor of history at Howard University who has spent years researching the Benin role in the slave trade. In the past, the country had a hard time telling the story of the victims of the slave trade. Instead, many initiatives commemorated those who enslaved them. Unlike some African countries, Benin has publicly acknowledged in the broad terms its role in the slave trade. In 1992, the country held an international conference sponsored by UNESCO, the UN Cultural Agency that looked at where and how slaves were sold. In 1999, President Matthew Kiriuku visited a Baltimore church and fell to his knees during an apology to African Americans for Africa's role in the slave trade. But what Benin failed to address was its painful internal division. Kiriuku's apology to Americans meant little to citizens who still saw monuments to this Osa across the city. Even Uida's tour guide had grown frustrated. These people don't know the history. De Sousa was the worst person, and he is still treated like a hero, said Remy Sigonlu, who runs a small business showing visitors around the city. It's been 50 years since the bridges left. Why are so many African judges still wearing wigs? <laughs> right? 
and the same could go for Jamaica. Why are you going to a privy county if you have a Supreme Court? You are weak. You still live in the image of your president. The scripture said, Envy though not your president, choose none of his way. Yet my people continue over and over choosing the ways of their oppressors. And you wonder why they say ruin over us, right? Because of the ignorance and your weakness. You're nothing like your ancestors. You know what I mean? You're nothing like your ancestors, even though you're Hebrews. You're weak. Spiritually and mentally. And to some degree, physically. You see. The memory of slavery emerges here in large and small ways in the 2016 presidential election candidate Lionel Sinsu angrily pointed out in a televised debate that has a point as a point opponent Patrice Talon who is now president of Benin was descendant of slaves merchants in villages where people were abducted for the slave trade. Families still ask reflexively when they hear and knock on the door whether the visitor is a human being or a slave trader or a raider. Right? Our anger at the families who sold our ancestors will never go away until the end of the world, said Placid Ogu Teddy. Right? Ogu Teddy, a businessman in the town of Kyoto, where thousands of people were seized and sold in the 18th and 19th centuries. When his children were young, Ogu Teddy told them they were barred from marrying anyone who was a descendant of the country's slave merchant. Some of Benin foremost scholars are battling the country's unwillingness to interrogate his messy past. You see. Martin de Sousa 52 left and descendant of Francesco Felix de Sousa sits with her mother Dagba Yulai. 70 at their home in Huida in January. LOC or Eulali is descended from a slave who was brought in brought to Huida from what is now Nigeria in the late 1800s and married off to a resident of a city. Again, Jane Han for the Washington Post. Right? Right, brothers and sisters. This is still a country divided between the families of the enslaved and the slave traders, said Olabihi Bababulolo, right? Babalula, Joseph Yai, a professor of history and linguistics who taught for years at the University of the Florida and worked for UNESCO in Paris before returning to his native Menin. But the elite don't want to talk about what happened here. Smithsonian Institute has signed a memorandum of understanding to provide help with the new museum, although details have yet to be worked out. Official says Benin's government had also appointed several scholars, including Yai, to ensure the accuracy and credibility of the exhibit in one of the museums in the city of Alada, about 20 miles from Uida. But even Ya questions the or Yai questions the authorities' willingness to address the facts. In this reconciliation, or is it just about attracting tourists? That's something we need to be vigilant about, he said. There are several reasons when in history of slavery was peppered over or misrepresented for so long. First, when Benin was a colony of France from 1904 to 1958, the French didn't want to draw attention to their own role in the African slave trade. Then, after Benin became independent, its leaders pushed for a sense of national and even pan-African identity. Since 1991, when Benin transitioned from a dictatorship to a democracy, the history of slavery has mostly been presented as a means of luring Western tourists. People here are trying to find work, they are trying to eat, they are surprised when they see tourists who come looking for the identity, said Jose Plia, the president advisor for tourism. Plia is directing the establishment of the two museums, one focusing on Huida's history due to open next year, and funded largely by the World Bank and, and, and the other in Alada. 
which will more broadly investigate the country's role in the slave trade and is scheduled to open in 2020. The two sites are expected to cost 24 million. So it's been it's been open three four years now, brothers and sisters, right? The government is also planning to re reconstruct the fort where slave merchants lived in Huida and the cells in which they kept their slaves. You see. The government acknowledges that if it wants to attract tourists, it will need to address concerns about whether Benin is whitewashing the actions of the slave trade's architects, advisors to the president said he plans to rename the place the Chacha Square in Huida, said to have been an open-air auction site for slave authorities have not yet decided on a new name. This is very del delicate subject. Plia said many members of the, the Zusa family are hagas at the idea. Hagas at the idea. He was a man who helped modernize our nation, said Judy Kael de Zusa, 43. Nothing his ancestors' role in expand, expand, expanding architectural trade with Europe. Right? One member of the family, Martin de Zusa, a tour guide, has urged the family for years to re-examine its history. It's time we accept the reality, she said in an interview, but most others are cautious. Late last year, the family appointed its new patriarch, or Chacha. He is a construction engineer named Moisi de Zusi, who lives in a concrete apartment building with a poster-sized picture of himself on the wall. <laughs> He has light brown skin and point of pride for a family that often boasts about his ties to colonists. <laughs> in an interview, he acknowledged his ancestors' role in the slave trade. It is something that makes me feel bad. We know it's painful and all I can do is apologize, he said. Still, he worried that members of his family would be livid if he shared that sentiment publicly in Benin. He evidently opposes any mention of De Zosa as a slave merchant in the new Huida Museum. It's the reputation of our family, he said. We don't want to be known for this dirty thing. The mid -January, in mid-January, he and dozens of other De Zosa descendants made their yearly pilgrimage to the city of Abomi, the former capital of the kingdom of Dahomey. A major regional power in pre-colonial days, a modern-day king of the homey, Dijalgani Agoli Agbo still presides even though the title is now a larger ceremonial one. The meeting had an extraordinary subtext, the kingdom of the homey, and had sold hundreds of thousands of slaves to merchants like Francesco de Zusa. The ceremony was about celebrating a relationship between two families that was originally forged over slaves. On that humid morning, Moesi de Zusa stepped out of an SUV wearing a gold trimmed shawl and cap. He walked to the front of a dimly lighted meeting room, sweating in the heat. A group of American anthropology students, almost all of them white, had been allowed inside to watch. Finally, King arrived around by several wives. Finally, King arrived surrounded by several wives wearing matching yellow and orange dresses. He shook the Zeus's hand. Classes of champagne were poured. Right, brothers and sisters? Right, brothers and sisters, you can see an image of, of the King of Abomi. The Jalgani Agoli Agbo sits between women from his family and the new Chaka leader of the Dezusa family, Oesi Dezusa, the Abomi Benin in January, again by Jane Han for the Washington Post. So finally, King arrived, surrounded by several wives wearing matching yellow and orange dresses. He shook Dezusa's hand. Glasses of champagne were poured. This ceremony reminds us of the connection between the homie and the Zusi, the king said, as the Beninese TV crew flim. I wish good health, a long life, and peace to the king, the Zusa responded. Slavery was never mentioned. 
It is a memory both families would prefer to forget, said the professor escorting the students, Timothy Landry of Trinity College in Connecticut. When the event ended, the Sousa family poured out of the building. Take a look at the screen, brothers and sisters, right? You'll see the image of Francesco de Sousa, right, brothers and sisters? There were outfits of the bright traditional African fabrics on on some of the skirts and shawls and white man's face had been printed. His eyebrow raised, his mustache curled. Right? In case he couldn't be identified, a man's name was printed in big letters. Francisco Felix de Zusa. Right? How refugees are being forced back to a war zone to repair their debts. Yes, brothers and sisters, as you can see, right, a wax print made with an image of Francisco Felix de Zusa, a prominent slave trader seen at a ceremony celebrating a relationship between two families that was originally forged over slaves in Abomi, Benin, Jane Han for the Washington Post. Right. So I'm going to end the Shabbat lesson here, brothers and sisters, so you have a full understanding of who... Benjamin is and where they are, yes. and the associates people, brother and sister, right? People associated with that tribe, right? You see, you got some in Jamaica along with Levi, and you got others in Africa also, brother and sisters, right? So I hope we could lay that to rest. Yahuda, Judah is the head tribe, but Judah was the only one caught up in the slave trade. Benjamin and Levi was also caught up in it. Right, brothers and sisters, so on that note, broke your heart, is ever hot, broke your shamashiak, shina, shina, vishina, bless the love and shalom.